Hello, all, and welcome to the Fantasy and Sci-Fi Fanatics Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Kubal. Today, I have me a very special guest, Thiago Abdallah. Thiago, how are you doing today? Great. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, super happy to be here. I love, I, my wife knows, like, I love finding people on TikTok and then getting them on. Like, I've been, I've been fishing and reeling them in like crazy. Like, TikTok, Twitter is like my water cooler. I'm just like, hey, you want to be on a podcast? And then people are like, yeah, like, when do you want, when do you want me on? So it's been a very good fishing spot lately. Twitter's been a little harder lately. So I was so glad to, you know, to see you, message you, and, you know, get you scheduled so quickly. So I really want to thank you for coming on today. And I, like I said, I've seen your book plastered everywhere. Um, you know, with a lot of my friends and stuff. So it just feels good. You know, as soon as I get somebody to see their book everywhere, I'm like, go, go, go. Uh, so it's yeah. Really <laughs> uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll start with yeah, that. Super, yeah, yeah, super yeah. happy for, for being here. You know, you, you found my one TikTok video <laughs> that, uh, that I used, that as, uh, I used that as, as a test to, to just <laughs> see how things work there. But I mean, I guess that's that's already a, a good return, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connecting, so. <laughs> well, that's my friend. Uh, yesterday, he was teasing me. He goes, he goes, man, the the places you find these new authors or just you know older authors that you know veteran authors that maybe people haven't heard of, and he's like, he was teasing me. He goes, you like pick up a carpet, look underneath, you know. He's like, you're with a flashlight in closets. He's like, you're picking up rocks and going in caves and. I'm like, it's really hard though. I do, do want to talk about it real fast because it's hard to, you know, sometimes it feels like you're, you know, you're calling out to the void. So I like to be that hand that goes through with the light, like come this way. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's fun though. I, like anytime anybody in the audience, anytime you have somebody, you know, who you're like, oh, this looks like a cool book or this is a new author. It's fantasy, sci-fi, horror, paranormal, whatever. As long as it's got some sort of fantastical elements, you, you send them my way and we will interview them. So yeah, it's awesome anytime I can get yeah. somebody on. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I have a list of friends that I'm making mm. here. And I'll, I'll send them I love book. referrals. I <laughs> yeah. love referrals. I had some of the ladies for February she wrote. Like, that was the only way I was able to flush out the month and get more, you know, more female authors. Like, yeah, like, I'll, I'll take anybody. Like, and I tell people all the time, like, this is, uh, you know, like, I'm, like, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I'm American. But this is a, this is a safe zone. Everybody's welcome here. So, I'll, I'll interview anybody at any time about their books, their writing, their art. Like I said, as long as it's a fantastical element, you send them my way, even if it's not. <laughs> yeah, I'll still interview awesome. them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll start with that first question there. I love this question. This is a, a great question that a, um, a viewer sent to me pretty early on in season one. And I'm actually really glad because I always learn a lot from it. Uh, what has your writing journey been like up until this point? So... Uh... I always tell people I'm not one of those writers who's had a story in my head uh, mm. since, you know, since childhood that, that I needed to get out and, and I wanted to be a writer. Um, so uh, I don't feel like I actually had a writing, a writing process or a writing journey until, until I, I actually sat down in my, you know, 30s. I think I was 31 when I decided to, to pull the trigger, like two, two or three years ago. Yeah, 30 or 31. Uh, I, I, I look older with the white hairs, but I'm 33. Uh, <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, it wasn't like, you know, I, I've always been practicing this. Uh, I've always been writing. Uh, I feel like it's more of a, fan, a fantasy journey uh, even more than a writing journey, you know. Uh, I've always, always loved fantasy. Always, it's 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 been part of my life forever. You know, uh, I, I, it started with Magic: The Gathering, probably, mm -hmm. and then there was like, you know, there there are games like Age of Empires or, oh, yeah, or stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that that I really liked, and then you know the 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 strategy game of Age of Empires naturally evolved into Warcraft, and that, that yeah. was like. <laughs> Uh, just you know age of empires with with fat with orcs yeah. and, and and dark elves and and, and then and that's I, I think that's when it blew up for me uh and uh, i call that my fantasy journey uh, my my right i i think i can call that my writing journey because uh, i was kind of unconsciously already on my writing journey because what always drew me to to these these kinds of games and and these kinds of, of elements was the story, you know. Uh, I, I used to play the the Warcraft three single player campaign hmm. a lot more than the multiplayer campaign because there were the cutscenes there, there was the story, yeah. there, there was like progression. So so I I really kind of jumped into that, 
and then I also read a lot as a kid and I started with with the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and, and then I, I went to Harry Potter like after that <laughs> uh, but the, then I started just just exploring just this this incredible world of, of reading right and uh, I never really really had that that click when I was a kid or a teenager or even in, in my I think it was probably close to my 20s when I said hmm you know I really like reading these stories I really don't like waiting for these stories to to come out why don't I <laughs> oh, why don't I create my own worlds and and then I can control it you know I, I can live in these worlds and, and and do whatever I want in them because I'll be the one writing them so uh it was kind of an idea I live in Brazil uh uh I am Brazilian. I, I don't just live in Brazil. So, you know, a bunch of people <laughs> uh, just looked at me like I was crazy. Like, you're not going to write a book in English. You know, what's what's here? Uh, but I did study English since I was like two. So so English is, is kind of as comfortable as Portuguese to me. So um, I, I just I, I kind of kept that idea at the back of my mind until uh, I finally, you know, like around my, my 30, 30 first, okay. not, not my birthday, but it, it was when my wife got pregnant. So it, it was like three years ago. Yeah. 2019. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I finally decided, I said, you know, uh, I work at a bank. It, it's a full-time job. Uh, Brazil, it's nine to six because we have a, a mm -hmm. kind of one hour lunch. Lunchtime is nine, nine to five. But it was never nine to six. You know, there, there was all, there were all yeah, yeah. just stuff you, you had to do and, and traffic. And uh, I, I live in Sao Paulo, which is kind of like a Brazil, oh, okay. New, New York. Uh, and I had like a one hour commute, one hour and a half commute. So I would get home, you know, like if I got home 730, it was early. Uh, so it was more of like closer to eight, almost nine. It was, <laughs> I, I was really worried that I would not have time to, to spend with my son and my family. Yeah, I yeah. said, man, you know, maybe, maybe I can, I can go back to that idea that I had writing a book and, and try to make this work. And, you know, uh, even if it doesn't work full time, at least it'll, it'll, it'll uh, I tried you know, yeah. a little, <laughs> kind of, kind of yeah. take that, that doubt of could I do it? out of my head so uh so uh, i kind of pulled the trigger on that and uh, i don't know if you can hear my my son in the background <laughs> <laughs> we had baby here all day yesterday yeah there's a, my yeah. nephew was here so yeah it's fine yeah he's he's kind of proving me right just, just <laughs> i do have a son i'm not lying you know? <laughs> he's like he's here uh <laughs> so so yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of, uh, I kind of decided that I wanted to to go that that path, and when I did decide that, I think my official writing journey began is when I I started researching stuff. Right, so uh, I didn't write a single word until August two thousand twenty. So okay. I, I started researching this stuff. August 2019 and I spent like a, a year reading and learning and then outlining and then uh, I started you know the, the first draft a, a year later because I didn't want to to uh, just jump in and say oh, I'm gonna try this and 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 see what happens I, I said if I'm gonna try this I really want to try this I really want to do this right so what do I need to learn you know if if this were like kind of university or something, uh, what would be the, the the classes that I'd have? So so, what composes you know a book? What's in there? So I started to read and 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 really jump into every single thing about about craft that I could, and uh, I, I read like close to to forty books. Oh wow. Yeah, not not all of them cover to cover, you know, like maybe half of them, like around 20, I read them yeah, from yeah. cover to cover. Uh, and, and I always tell people I, I did that because I wanted to see what worked for me and what would, would work in, in creating my process. So uh, there's stuff that don't work for me. There's stuff that worked really well for me. And uh, 
if you ask me, I'd probably tell you I have like four or five books, which are my go-tos, but I'd probably end up recommending you like 10 or 15. <laughs> because, uh, I, I, I keep, you know, pulling them, them up and, and, and remembering like little bits that I, I learned from each book. So uh, the first thing I ever, I, I, I should, I should show my book, right? I, I didn't even say that I, I mean, I'm the <laughs> author of A Touch of Light. <laughs> it's, it's this book, you might've seen the cover. So I, I love I the tree. Known. I love the yeah. tree. Like the sword's yeah. great, but like I'm a tree guy. Like I love the tree. Yeah. And so many people have said like the the contrast. So I used to teach graphic design in high school, and like the the contrast of the lighter colors and the light, literally, like you feel it. Like when, and I've talked to a couple people about your cover. Like people are like, oh, I really feel it. You know, like where the light's coming through, and there's the lighter colors versus the dark. And um, yeah. a lot of people have said just from just from the get-go, you know, that's how I felt. And I felt a very yin-yang type of pull from it right away. So I think it's it's a brilliant cover. So whatever you did to, you know, to figure that out, that was that was brilliant. Anytime you put a sword on the cover, you know, everybody's like, yes, please. That's what I was like. That's why yeah. I saw it. I was like, yeah. I saw the tree. I was like, yeah. follow this guy. <laughs> I said that message yeah. right away. So. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, we can talk about the whole process. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's part of, of being an indie author. You have to kind of be uh, almost like a, not not exactly a specialist, but you have to be yeah. as much of, of a specialist or, or learn as much as you can from every every one of, of yeah. the, the kind of topics that, that yep. I was talking about. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, the, the writing itself, I, I, I kind of jumped into into doing it uh, in August 2020 and I wrote like three or four drafts I thought my my fourth draft was really really good and then I sent it to my editor and then I realized how bad it was uh, <laughs> when, <laughs> when I got when I got the comments back uh, yeah and, and I, I'm so sorry that my editor had to deal with, with that <laughs> first draft because it was so so bad uh but man uh, i learned a lot you know and and um if if there's any reason you know people mildly know who i am or, or, or have my book on their radars today um it's uh, i think the the two main elements are the cover and you know just just the editing just okay you know the, the cover is super important uh it needs to draw people in but once people are in there they, they need to like the story yep. and this story would not have have been you know, half of what it is if it weren't for for my my editor uh being so invested in, and helping me so much with, with this book and i've i've started writing other stuff and it's just amazing how much i've learned uh from you know that first draft that yeah. in 2020 to, to now i'm even writing faster because i feel more confident and, and i think like uh, i feel like i've i've absorbed you know stuff that 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 my editor sent me. And I think that's something that, that really goes overlooked uh, to, to writers in, in general. You know, once once you get a, a book back that's that's been, you know, professionally edited, it is a treasure trove of, of just knowledge of, of stuff that that you can learn, you know. And I, I tried I try to find patterns of everything that that the comments kind of highlighted of uh, you're doing this, you should do this, you're doing this, you should do this. And I was like, okay, uh, I saw that, you know, I've been repeating this like kind of three or four times. So it, it's probably a bad habit. Uh, I do it enough that it's probably a bad habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll cut it out. And, and that just, you know, that just makes my writing so, so better. Uh, at least, you know, those first drafts, I, I obviously never, be uh, I think it's it's uh, I feel like I'm a crazy person if I if I publish something without editing yeah, not yeah, that yeah. I'm judging anyone who does that it's just I could never do it we uh, don't recommend it we don't recommend yeah, it. yeah 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 <laughs> so uh, I I obviously still you know I'm always gonna get up and my my books before before thinking about publishing anything but uh man you know it's just uh, i feel like i'm i'm so much further uh down the the timeline of of, of that first book so so yeah uh, it, it's kind of a, a long-winded answer but uh that that was kind of how, how my my journey started and um you know after after it was published just 
keep going, you know, keep writing. And uh, I think that's that's one of the main things, you know, just I, we'll, we'll probably talk about self-publishing a bit more, but oh, you know, for just sure. yeah, yeah. the main thing that, that self-publishing gives you speed and, and flexibility to, to publish yeah. whenever you like. So, yeah. Well, you gave me a lot there. I, I had some good ideas for some <laughs> later episodes. Well, because uh, you you and a couple other people this week, um, you know, had mentioned, I'm totally blank out who I interviewed yesterday. <laughs> That's how tired I am. Uh, but, um, you know, you, you had mentioned, you know, like these book resources that you go to. And I actually keep mine um, on a shelf over here and I always refer back to them. So I actually think I'm going to do an episode just going over my book resources and, you know, what I like to do. And I have some cool ones too from, you know, I think that some people, you know, might actually find helpful. So that was a great idea. Um, awesome. awesome. But I really liked what you were saying too. I think I might for my own, I have this, um, like my own fantasy series I've been coming up with a long time. So I got this one, it's called the thief's ambition. It's like they, they find this, like they, these two young thieves get a chance to um, join a thieves guild and in their city, you have to join a guild. Otherwise you're free meat and anything can happen to you. So they go after this cursed sword uh, they don't know it's cursed. So I'm actually thinking about, I've been thinking about this for a while. So I'm glad you mentioned this. So it's got me thinking too, like, I thought it'd be cool to actually send it to an editor after I'm done with draft two and some beta readers and on the air, have them give me their notes, you know, and talk about it and go through the process. Cause I think a lot of things happen behind closed doors, you know, and I think it would be cool to like, I also think it'd be interesting to go over a couple of my outlines also with somebody, you know, to kind of talk about it, you know, cause then I think, I don't think I've seen that, you know, like I'm trying to think of things that people haven't seen that would be helpful and going from one draft to another one outline to another, I think it'd be helpful. So I'm really glad you said that. Cause I guess I needed to sit there for a while, but, but yeah, you do make a really good point again, you know, like this has come up time and time again, you know, like it's funny that you say like four drafts, cause that seems to be like the average lately. That's what I'm trying to go for is I'm trying to get better at crafts. So this summer when I do go for draft two, you know, I'm, we're all just trying to be more efficient. Right. You know, yeah, obviously yeah. you have a, you know, your family have a job, have a lot going on. So it's like, you have to learn to be more efficient. And that's what I've been trying to tell people. Yeah. Like I'm a teacher, I'm a coach. I'm not going to stop coaching or teaching unless I get go full time and things go really well. But even then I'd probably be coaching. Um, you know, it'd be hard for me to give that up. So it's like, I feel like you have to find ways to make yourself more efficient. So I'm so glad that you spoke to all, you know, all of those things. If you see me writing, it's because I, I like to take notes for myself. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I know the audience thinks I do this just for them, but it's mostly for me. So <laughs> I just share the journey. So uh, uh, yeah, but I'm glad to, help. glad to help. Great answer there. Uh, <laughs> so we'll go on to that second question there. If there's something that we do forget at the end, we can always, you know, pop it in if for some reason we didn't ask a question on it or touch on it. Um, so that second one there. So when it came to writing your first novel, A Touch of Light, what was your writing process like? You talked about it a little bit, but was it like yeah. you was it like you did have an idea, you know, like after that research period or that year, was it like the research that gave you the idea? Like, was it something, you know, like you said, you know, like I know Diablo too and Diablo yeah. were inspirations for me. Like a lot of stuff I write is, is just naturally grimdark because of that. And you know, yeah, like you and myself yeah. being closer in age, you know, like we were kind of in a golden age of fantasy and sci-fi, you know, even horror yeah. too. You know, I mean, the fact that we're writers is probably not too far-fetched giving, you know, all yeah. the, the video games, you know, the rise of PlayStation, Xbox, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was just curious at exactly where your writing process or journey was in terms of this first book. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, you, you mentioned Diablo. I think Diablo was uh the the game that kind of was the most emblematic in my childhood first of all because my my pc couldn't run it at first so i was i was like wanting to play it for years not, not <laughs> i years, know that feeling maybe, <laughs> yeah it, it was like maybe maybe months uh, yep. or, or a year and then when i finally managed to you know convince my parents to get me a pc that ran diablo uh, i was i was just crazy i was life I, I think it was yeah yeah and, and then you know there's all the stuff of you know parents trying to, to pull you away from the pc because you, <laughs> you don't even eat uh so so yeah there <laughs> there was all all of that and uh yeah i, I think i think that that contributed um to to the idea process right so uh i think every everything every little bit 
contributes to your process. So the way that I started it was um, the, the ideas themselves, I consider them as part of the process. So uh, it, it was one of the uh, one of the topics, you know, there was dialogue, plot, character, and one of them was idea generation. So, um, you know, it's it's kind of like the, the question that, that I've seen people say authors hate answering, you know, how, how do you come up with ideas? But uh, I'm, I, I'm also a little bit of a musician. I actually studied business and music at the same time in university. In university. So I, I did two, two universities at the same time. And um, one thing I learned with music especially is that, you know, nothing, I don't think there's anything that exists in the world that you can't learn. And nothing's yeah. a God-given talent that you either are born with it or, or you can't do it, right? But I think there's a tendency for people to just look at it and say, oh man, you know, that guy, he just has so many ideas. Uh, I guess he, it's just talent. I guess he was just born with it. I, I just couldn't accept that. So uh, I, I, I went to look for, for books on how to generate ideas. You know, and uh, I, I I came on to a really really good one that's called uh, Endless Ideas uh, by by Sean Sean and Platt and Neve Silver I think, uh, and you know there's a whole kind of of area in business which is marketing which people live on generating ideas so yeah, yeah. uh there are a ton of books on the subject it's not only this one this one's focused on writing but you know uh, i i read on um, i read about a few a few kind of, kind of exercises or, or, or things that you can do to, to start coming up with ideas and it helped me a ton and uh, the thing that i learned about ideas is that it's not like uh something you need to come up with every single idea you have is kind of like in your subconscious. It's a stream. And the work that you need to do is to fish it out. That's, that's just the way that people uh, see it uh, when they start studying it. And I think it, it really makes sense because your ideas are nothing more than, than a result of everything you've experienced throughout your life, right? Uh, so a lot of stuff, yeah, when we talk about inspiration, it's it's just you know stuff you've seen in other places, but that you, you kind of transform and, and and give your own twist to it with the experiences of stuff that you lived in, in your life, right? Or, or if you kind of put two things together, they they become a different thing, right? So uh, that's that's kind of like the, the base of everything. That that's one pillar of it, and then there's the second pillar of it is the what if. I th I think this is 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 the the most common thing that that people people tell you right. It's the how do you come up with ideas if you ask what if. So you know what if I don't know our, our world suddenly got really cold and we had to deal with it right. Uh, what if uh, I, I mean I can't even talk about my idea for for such a light. Uh, it's it's like uh, what if uh, the 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 lore didn't talk about uh an apocalypse what if it talked about re a reverse apocalypse that that's how it started you know the the idea is and that kind of came from diablo you know diablo is, is a little <laughs> bit of, so uh but it's like what if people didn't you know kind of fear the apocalypse what if the the goddess would come back to our world and make things better when we proved ourselves right uh, and that that just kind of starts to stem out into into a, a whole other other just you know world of stuff, which yeah, is yeah. you know okay. So if that is happening, then what happens? And, and, and it's it, it's almost like a a, a, a computer formula. You know? It's like that. Yeah, if yeah, this, yeah. then that. So so yeah. If if it's a reverse apocalypse, then people would want to be here when that happens so they would start to value life so does that mean that people who die are unworthy and then suddenly i have a concept for a whole religion yeah, uh, yeah based on that it wasn't that fast right you, you spend some yeah. time thinking about it but that's that's just kind kind of how how the idea popped up and then you know once you have the, the kind of foundation to build upon then you start looking at all, all the other stuff right so so you start looking at, at okay so now that i have this this kind of, of, of concept of what the world's going to be what's going to going to govern it 
who are the people who are going to be in here, right? And then you know, there's there's just like a, a, a ton of stuff that that pop up again from your experiences. You know, it's like uh, how do you create your characters, right? So uh, a lot of people ask me if it's if it's people I know, and I never create characters from people I know, just because they're they're too real to me. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I I just I, I can't transfer that. You know, it's like oh, let me get a bit of this person and put it into into this character. Yeah, yeah. and I just it, it, it doesn't work for me. Uh, so, but you know, the characters that I've I've met in fiction sometimes can work for me. So, uh, for example, I have one character who has voices in her mind, right, Lynn, uh, and. I can I can safely tell you that a lot of that was influenced by my first like 30 minutes of playing at the pseudo sacrifice oh, cool. and playing it with headphones late at night in the dark is <laughs> terrifying and awesome. So <laughs> I've heard that quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean the 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 voices that they're like yeah, yeah. when you're you're with the headphones, they're like in your mind almost. So uh you know that that wasn't the whole concept of her character, but it was a big part of it. So yeah, and it doesn't mean it's it's the same character, you know, right? Uh, as as the one in the game, it's just a, a little bit of inspiration that that you pull and and you know just little bits that you that you put in. So uh, I have a whole kind of character creation process that I that I read about in another book okay. that I can that I can jump into later. But you know, once you have these characters. Then and here I think it's I'm I'm a pretty linear guy and I do one thing and then I move on to the next. Uh, so once I had the characters, I I said okay now what are these characters doing in this world? You know, what's going to generate conflict because people don't want to read stuff that doesn't have conflict, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and then you start coming up with the plot and that was kind of like the outline and that's where my my creative process really really happens in the outline of for the plot at least um and you know my the way that i structure it is i i break down the, the story structure into into big milestones um and these are milestones are, are kind of like gateways where either things change or a big challenge is, is posed that the character will have to kind of work out in the next block and this will lead them roughly in in quarters uh throughout the book and uh, I have these these milestones or these gateways for each character, and then uh, that's my outline basically. You know, because uh, I have what will happen, how it will affect the character. So I have plot and character arcs, and then how the character will, will grow from what's happening, and how this will affect you know the world at large. So uh, so yeah, I mean it's it. That's you know, it's a, a pretty high overview of, of, of how how I went about it. But you know, I, I after just reading it on, I think I started outlining in, in April, and then I actually started writing in August. So okay, kind of like four months of, yeah, of yeah, outlining yeah. and creating. But uh, it, it wasn't just the first book; it was a whole series. Oh, okay. Uh, the outline for That's for fun. the next books was was kind of was still kind of bad. It was it was on the level of of that first one. So after I finished the first book, I actually revisited the outline for the second book, and uh, I'm already I'm already writing the, the second book, and I, I feel like I've refined my process. So now yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I have I have those milestones. I have everything that's gonna happen in between. Actually, break it down into you know big paragraphs of what's going to happen and then I get these paragraphs and I break them down in kind of like smaller bullet point paragraphs of okay this is going to be maybe a scene or a chapter this is going to be a scene or a chapter so when I, I'm finished with the outline I know roughly how many scenes and chapters I'm going to have for each character and that gives me a sense of of the whole book and and how things are going to progress and if something needs to to work with this other thing and and how these characters are gonna are gonna kind of align and it, it just gives me so much control to to kind of leave in little details or, 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 or clues that I don't think anyone's going to pick up. It's kind of like for me, <laughs> but you know, it, it just, it, it gives you so much control over the whole process of, of writing and it honestly avoids writer's block, you know? Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, I, I've never really believed in, in writer's block. I think, I think it's a blanket term for you don't know what's happening and you, and you just need to find what it is you need to fix. Uh, 
So I think it's actually dangerous calling it writer's block because you accept you accept it, you label it, and you're just basically giving up saying I can't do it. Yeah. That's why it's called that's why you're blocked, right? It's because you're not looking for the issue to solve. So uh, so yeah, uh, I, I always try to, and, and look at it as a, as a process. Maybe it's because I work at a bank and I'm too analytical, but that's that's just how I approach it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's funny that you mentioned writer's block because, like, years ago I used to call it that, and you know I get stuck. Like I'm stuck right now with an idea because I get done with my like thief book, and this guy he's like a constable, and he's like, "Nope." He goes, "Wait, wait, wait, Dan. I know you're about to write draft two and redo your outline." Yeah. And he, yeah. I picture like an actor talking to me. He's like, I don't like this. He's like, I, no, no, I don't want to be a constable. He goes, I think my character is more of a thief taker. And I'm like, dude, no. He goes, and I, but that's not my name. Uh, you have to change my name, my social class, my, you know, my job. And then yeah. it changes this entire story now. And he goes, and I want this done like immediately. So I'm like, yeah. got him <laughs> partly figured out, but then it's like, I have other things to figure out. So I was like, I'm going to take a little break. Well, I was having trouble. So I go and do this other outline for one of my other ideas. That's what I always do. Like, I don't ever just not write. I want to, even if I like inch towards something, I have something written. So I found that I know some people it's hard to go, you know, from space to space, but you know, I, I like Dirk Ashton is one of those guys that I love to talk to about writer's block. You know, he'll say like, start reading whatever you had and then go from there. Or like you said, like a what if, right? Like, even if it's just an exercise, like it's a couple of sentences or what. Uh, I tell my kids all the time as a teacher, like, don't look at a blank screen. Like I use sentence yeah. starters. So look up sentence starters, for instance. I do that all the time, you know, and a lot of times they'll spur a really good idea. And even if you have to tweak it or something, at least you started writing. Uh, so I do like how you mentioned writer's block. You had a lot of really good things there, I got to say. I like how you said, um, first of all, love to hear about the character creation book. I, I, we should have a question here about that. Um, but I really like that. Um, I like how you said you break your story down into milestones. I've heard more and more people say that. Did you get, yeah. is that something you naturally did or is that something that in your research process, you know, for craft that you found worked yeah. for you? That's that actually, that's actually a funny story. Not, not this specifically, but the question of if it's something that I, I, I came up with myself, I was the kind of person that thought all you needed to be a writer was good grammar. <laughs> and, and <laughs> And I was worried because I didn't think I had good enough grammar. So, so yeah, uh, uh, everything that that's in my process is stuff that I, that I picked up from books. And this one specifically is from a book that's called Story Engineering by Larry Brooks. Uh, he does weigh a little heavily on on you need to outline, you need to outline. You're gonna die if you don't outline. Um, so if you're you know more of a pantser, I'd say try and skip those bits. He really is trying to convince you that you need to outline, but uh, I, I, I'm a true believer in that everyone has their process and outlining might not work for some people. So yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's what works for you. Uh, there have been amazing books written without outline. Mark Lawrence doesn't use an outline, yeah. and, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, uh, you don't need an outline. An outline works for me because I need an outline. So I, yeah. I, as a writer, you need an outline. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, just a, a caveat to, to that. But he has actually story engineering and story physics. Both are really, really, really good. And uh, at the end of story engineering, there's kind of like this this beat sheet, which is basically what I described. You know, like just kind of writing bullet points of what every scene is going to be. And uh, these milestones, he actually describes them. It's, it's like the first plot point, the midpoint, the second plot point, and then uh, how you get to, to a conclusion, right? Uh, and it, it may sound formulaic, but it really isn't because you're flexible, um, you know, you, you can kind of have a range of, of where you, you, you can put these plot points and you don't have a set thing that needs to happen. It's not like, you know, oh, someone needs to die in the first plot point. No, it's, it's just like, the first plot point is a place where it's it's kind of like the point of no return. You know, it's it's where the, the characters are, are leaving their their kind of like old life or old mission behind. Uh, and they just can't can't get back to it. So it's kind of like a shift in the story that that accelerates it. So uh, yeah, I, I can go on forever with, with, <laughs> with this stuff. I, I love it. So uh, yeah, I mean, 
uh, I really recommend just just diving into and reading it because I think people will get different things than I got out of, of that book by yeah, reading yeah, yeah. it themselves, right? So so yeah, that's that's kind of like the 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 basis of, of what I I I started to to think about in in terms of story structure, right? And and how how that helped just structure my plot, and and the book on character that I was talking about, it's it's another one called uh, uh, the Compass of Character. Okay. By yeah, it's oh man, I, I was I, I'll, I'll I'll pull up the the, the writer's uh, name, but it, it's Dave, and I I just I I always forget his surname. Uh, I'll, I'll get it here. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm definitely gonna check. I, I've heard of Larry's before, so I'm definitely gonna check those out for sure. And then, um, what I'm trying to do, like I said, I'm trying to do an episode on like my top ten. You know, like I have this one that my best friend bought me. Um, <clears throat> I'm totally gonna butcher his last name. It's Christopher, I think, Vogler. Uh, but this is the 25th uh, anniversary edition of the Writer's Journey. Um, cool, cool. And mythic structure for writers. And I thought, oh, okay, because I've always thought, you know, like. I just want to say to the audience, like, I always thought like, oh, I, there's so many writers, you know, like the hero's journey, like it's, it's been done, but like yeah. what he does is, and I like, is like, it's kind of like martial arts. Like they always like, it's like the Bruce Lee's thing. Like um, there's also in the Forbidden Kingdom um, movie with Jackie Chan and Jet Li, it's this amazing quote. And I think of it for writing all the time where, uh, and with martial arts and with life where he, uh, I think Jet Li says that he's like, um, uh, learn the form and then seek the formless. And I love that because I do think that, you know, you can learn a lot, not that you need a degree in writing or whatever, but I do think you can learn a lot from books like these that even if you just learn what the structure is, right? Like you're saying, or how, or just, just craft in general. It's like, I do the same thing for martial arts. I learn when people are coming at me this way, I learn how to do that so I can defend it yeah. or attack it, you yeah. know, and I mold it, you know, and I do think that with writing, like you were saying, you know, it's, it's good to know what tools you want to use, what ones are best for you, but you still need to learn the tools. Otherwise you're never going to learn craft. And I think a lot yeah. of people, um, you know, Jeffrey Haskell and I said, like, they don't worry about craft. I worry about craft all the time that I'm not worried about book sales, whatever. I am only worried personally about putting out the best product. So I definitely think that, you know, you're on the right track there. And I mean, I, I'm definitely going to check these out. So I'm really I'm taking the summer off to read and to do research and stuff. I've been working like a dog, you know, so I can have that time. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to checking these out. Awesome. I totally awesome. get what you're saying. I mean, that's like Jeffrey and I, he goes, just hit me up sometime. You want to talk about craft. He's like, not a lot of authors want to talk about craft. And, you know, I mean, outlining is a craft, you know, and that's all I'm yeah. been doing this summer is like this summer. I want to work on two, two rough drafts. Um, want to finish one, want to do a draft two for another one, but I want to have at least three, you know, outlines ready to go. And I'm not yeah. going to outlining, like you're saying, I think I personally, I feel like you're much better at outlining than I am, especially if you're outlining, you know, um, you know, multiple books at a time, but you did mention something that I'm so interested in now. So, okay. So you said that you had outlined a few books out, right? Yeah. Now, I'm always trying to find somebody who's done this. Okay. So you did that, you get done with book yeah. one how much different was it for you to go back and then have to change those other outlines now? It was, it was pretty different. Uh, not going to lie. Uh, it was a lot of stuff changed in book one that just wasn't making sense. Yeah. yeah. And I, I actually had outlined five books, but I okay. felt like that was a little bit too much. And I scaled it back to four books. Mm -hmm. you no, know, uh, I, I, I think I was being too patient uh, and, you know, I just gotcha. needed to give people more answers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically. Totally. So, so, so I tightened it down to four books, uh, but it, it was different. I mean, the process itself was a little different because I had more experience and I had more control yeah. of where the story was going. Yeah. And I knew the characters a lot better. That That's actually one thing that, that I think, yeah, I think it was the main thing that happened during editing, you know, when was just, uh, I didn't just do the back and forth of send my editor the manuscript, get it back with comments. I talked to him in between uh, and, and he was so invested in my world. That, that, that's why I said, I was really, really fortunate to, to work with, with him. Uh, it, it was, it, I actually found these guys through a book, you know, I was reading a book on, on self-editing uh, uh, by, by Randy Brown. It's called uh, Self, 
I, I butchered the, the name of this last time, and, and <laughs> I, I'm uh, it, it's it's self editing for fiction writers. If I'm not mistaken, I will I will pull that up so I don't butcher it again. Uh, but Randy Brown, R N W N E Brown with an E at the end, and uh, Dave King, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, are the authors. So if you go if you go with the authors, you'll, you'll find the book. Um, I'm like I'm like um, Sherlock. I'll find them. If it's a yeah. book, I'll find it. if it's an author, I'll find yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I just I got in touch with them and I was just super fortunate to, to that my editor there, Julian, Julian, Julian Delfino, uh, he, he just, you know, he he jumped into it. And he was almost as invested, not almost, he wasn't invested in this world as I was. And we would talk about it almost like every day it was like, OK, what what do we have to, to fix today? It's like chapters one, two and three. And I, would, I was go crazy and fix it. And the next day I was like emailing him and saying, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's talk again. And he was like, that's really fast. <laughs> I almost I almost feel like he he regretted it at first, you know, but then <laughs> you know, I, I think he saw I wouldn't let go and he was like, okay, let, let's do this. So uh so yeah, I mean uh I I, I go off on tangents and then and then I, I take a, a while to to remember the <laughs> the first the, the initial questions. But yeah, so then coming back to outlining once we did that, I feel like I I knew the characters a lot better and I had uh I rewrote practically the entire draft after that. Um but once I was you know comfortable with book one and it was ready, uh Coming back and doing the outlines to books two, three, and four, and five, I was kind of like, oh man, you know, I need to change a bunch of stuff. So I actually changed a few of the, the milestones, right? What was happening, yeah. stuff that I felt wasn't wasn't making sense for, for certain characters. I'm adding another character. So cool. it's it's gonna be four four POVs, four POVs, four books, right? So it's yeah, four for us kind of like uh uh that's one of the the little the little secrets that I think no one will 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 get. But you know, it's like I actually came up with the idea of it being a reverse apocalypse. So it's like it's almost as if they're the four horsemen. They're not like I don't oh, want to cool. create any theories or anything. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> too late. You already uh, said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it, it it's almost like you know. There's kind of each, if you look closely at the characters, each one kind of has a thing, you know, uh, yeah. that, that may allude to, to one of the four horsemen. So uh, that's, that's kind of like the, the fourth, uh, the fourth POV there. Uh, that's, that's coming in next book. And then, you know, just uh, redoing it, it, it was a little cringy. It was like, oh man, why did I write this? You know, I, I was so, so bad. I'm pretty sure if I look at it again in a year, I'm going to feel the same, yeah. but uh, yeah hopefully because that means you're growing right like if not, yeah, you're kinda yeah like you're kind of like wait a minute did i did i not grow enough you know but yeah. maybe you just get really good at outlining you know and get your idea down but yeah exactly and you know i actually went faster this time i mean it, it was like it wasn't like a month it was more of like a week and i i, I redid the outline to the second book I, I broke it down into bullet points and you were talking about not looking at a blank screen i sometimes get uh, i mean after i do these bullet points I actually then transfer this into a scene structure, which is something that, that I got from a few other books, which is uh, scenes can be active or reactive, right? So if it's an active scene, it has a goal, a conflict, the action that the character takes to, to solve the conflict, and then how that scene concludes, uh, whether they're, uh, they're uh, successful or not. Normally, they're not successful because that's what pushes you forward in the yeah. story. And then there's the reactive scene of, of okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to, to be active, reactive, active, reactive, reactive, right? But uh, the reactive scenes is when the, the character kind of takes a, a, a pause and 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 reacts to, to what happened in, in previous scenes. So it's emotional reaction, debate, they, they need to, to kind of come up with something or decide something and then a decision, right? So uh, so I, I kind of get those bullet points, I break them into the scenes this way. So yeah, I spent a lot of time outlining. I, I, I feel like I front load a lot of stuff, but when I start writing, I have that like that, that little, you know, just, just kind of goal conflict uh, action. It's super easy to just jump in and write and, and just say, man, I know what's gonna happen. I know what yeah. needs to happen, right? Uh, but at the same time, I like leaving myself open. And if I'm writing something, and as I said, oh, man, it's, it's not working, uh, I'll just I'll just change it. 
You know, just say, okay, uh, 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 the outline can't be a crutch. It has to be something that helps you, not something yeah, yeah. that limits you. So it's like, okay, I know I outlined this, but I'm, I'm changing it. It, it, does, it isn't feeling well. And I, sometimes I, I just wrote something that's really cool in the previous scene. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep rolling with this. And I change a, a bunch of stuff in the next scene. And then sometimes I revise the outline. Mostly I don't. I just get the outline the way I did it and just, you know, add the, the new stuff that I've been doing. Oh, that's so, so yeah, I, I just, I, I leave myself open a little bit as well because sometimes cool stuff just pops up. It's just the way it is, you know, when yeah. you're, learning, you're learning, so. No, I think, I think that's a great point. I think if you are, um, I'm going to steal Michael R. Fletcher's thing here for a minute. Um, I think it was him on the Wizards, Warriors, and Words, or it was either Jed Hearn or Rob J. Hayes uh, or their guests, but like they were talking about outlining. And so I think it was Mike said, you know, like you don't want to, you know, you, you want it to help you, but you don't want it to shackle you, you know, and, and pull you back. Yeah. So I definitely, I definitely think that's, you know, it should be like kind of like street signs. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, I, I think that's a great, great point that you make. I just am curious. So would you say, would you say that outlining, multiple books ahead of time before finishing book one even though you came back and changed a bunch of stuff would you still yeah. say that that was more helpful than not going ahead yeah I, I would because the big stuff didn't change right so I knew how the series was going to end yeah uh in book one so I can foreshadow that and that was the main reason I decided to outline uh before before starting it because i said man what if i decide something in the end that i had to foreshadow in book one and i didn't yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, i just had to to have it all in view before i started it was almost like a safety yeah. <laughs> for no, yeah, safety no. reasons you know totally totally yeah well yeah. i think that's the trap that you find yourself in especially as an indie author is like you know you you know you might write yourself into a corner or you haven't alluded to things enough you know like for myself that's why I like my own fantasy stuff separate and like I wrote my first draft I'm going to write this other book and then I'm hoping that that experience helps me fix this one I'm yeah, yeah. hoping to get that done but before releasing it I like I want to edit it and ready so that I can you know prep book two if I need to I can go back right before publishing and like you said you know like foreshadow certain things like what if I come up with a really cool, cool idea for book two and you know I I got this one guy who kind of, I guess I can't give that away, but um, he, he's got this really cool thing that's going to happen to him throughout book one. Yeah. It's really big in book two and it helps drive the plot. Well, if people don't like it, I'm going to have to change it. And then yeah. it's like, you know, then, then it's a mess. So I definitely think that's where, like you were saying earlier, you know, with indie publishing or self-publishing, you, you know, it is quicker, but you do have a lot more control, you know, to do those kinds of things. And, but I do, you know, I'm trying to get better at outlining ahead of time so that, you know, the trilogy or whatever, or duology or whatever you want to call it, what, you know, however many books you have, I think it, I think it is more professional if they match more, you know, and I do think it's smart of you, you know, to go ahead and to have those milestones. And I do like how you keep referring them to milestones. I'm going to actually yeah. think about that when I go do my outline later today is like kind of thinking more awesome. that way than. Yeah, yeah. What I well, then what I've been doing, I think that's uh, it's already <laughs> helped me come up with some different ideas. So, yeah, I think that's that's all great advice. I got some great notes, so I'm sure everybody cool, else is cool. too. So, cool. I just I've been trying to find. You're like my white whale. I've been trying to find somebody who's done that, and everybody I know is like a pantser. And I'm like, come on, guys. I'm like, I'm a pantser too. I'm like, this is not working. I'm like, I'm trying to not be a pantser because what I found yeah. is is like, as I wrote an outline for draft one for one book, right. And I found that it was very helpful, but then it wasn't a good outline. So then I was changing stuff. So now after draft one, I feel like I have to re-outline, get better at it to make draft two better, you know, to save time. And, you know, I think you, you know, I've talked to some people about that, but I like how, you know, I thought about that too, like moving on with the outlines even before, you know, like even maybe one yeah. you know, book one's done. So I just, I've been trying to find somebody like yourself for a while. So I'm so glad you said awesome. that. Because, it's giving me a lot to think about. No, I'm always, I'm always available, man. <laughs> writing and, and I love talk about it. I didn't know we were going to talk so much about craft. I would have come up with different questions. <laughs> like I love finding oh. people that I'm blind. I just want to say to you as a compliment, like it's very clear to me why so many of my friends have been sharing your book on Twitter, because clearly, you know, you've studied, you know, you've taken the time and studied craft. And I do want to talk about with this real quick with the audience that 
you know, like you were saying right at the start, you know, like you took the time and, you know, we're reading about craft, you know, talking to people what to do, what not to do. I do think that if you are going to particularly be an indie, you know, published author, and I, I, I can see, I just personally, as you're talking, I can see more and more now why people are picking up your book, why they're sharing it, because it's craft, you know, like you have a great cover, you know, it was absolutely amazing. You know, I think, you know, obviously you have a great editor, um, you know, you guys work really well together, which is also important, but I just think that you took the time, you know, to actually learn what you were doing. You know, I just personally think that's why more and more people are picking up your book. That's why I'm excited to pick it up, uh, especially after this craft conversation. So thanks. Um, thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that third one. So I am curious, why did you choose self-publishing over traditional publishing? Yeah, that's that's a big one. I actually wrote the first book almost entirely thinking I wanted it to be trend. I wanted it to be traditionally published because I had it in my mind uh, wrongly uh, because I think self pub has changed a ton. Okay. I had it in my mind that people didn't like self pub, right? It, it still exists. The, the the stigma of you know, oh, this is indie. <laughs> I actually I, I got a one star in that galley yesterday saying this is clearly indie. Try harder. I'm like uh, try harder to not be indie. Well, why do you want me to try harder? At? <laughs> I just can't stand <laughs> reviews like that. Like like I that's why I personally like I'm like. I'm like, what do reviews really do? Because personally, like I see your book. So I just want to say, like, I saw your book cover on, you know, on, you know, on TikTok. And then I went and looked at your website in the blurb right away. I was like sold. I don't even look at reviews because I, you know, you get, you see all the time, right? Like 3.85 out of five, but then I go to read it and it's a five for me, you know? And I just think yeah, that exactly. you have to be careful when judging, uh, particularly a new author like yourself based off reviews, because, you know, I just think expectations are different. And I think that, you know, if you like what a story sounds and looks like, I think you should just read it and not worry about it. That's crazy to me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's just, you know, I'm not even complaining about the review. It's just a, a, an example to show that people still think like that. You know, this is clearly in the, I mean, yeah, it is. And I'm not hiding it. And I'm proud of it, actually. You should because... take that review down. <laughs> That's not I mean, a review. It's not a review. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, this is Amazon too. Is my one of my friends has one where the book fell apart. Well, I'm like, you're not. He's like, oh, I guess it's about. Oh, it's Wade Garrett. I'm like, wait. I was like, that's not your problem. I'm like, you're yeah, not. Yeah. I'm like, here's this big company. I go, how on earth is that in your review? I said, so that's bringing down your stars, because I go, they should call the company and complain. I go, they need. I just want people in the audience to know that when you make a, a star review, it should be personally. I think you know, blurb, cover, you know editing decisions because you know you really got to work with your editor you know copy editing or just the story like or the blurb like please yeah. please stop doing yeah. things like that it drives me nuts <laughs> yeah i mean there are one star reviews because the, the product was late as well but uh, i mean it, it, it's, it's fine let's let's not jump into that because <laughs> i'm gonna do an episode that's, on that i'm gonna do an episode yeah on yeah that. yeah that's that's Absurd. just a real deep rabbit hole that we're not gonna get out of yeah, so yeah. uh it wasn't no, you I mean, saying it, it's me saying it. They can come after you. Yeah. <laughs> they get one star review by my books when they're out next year. So yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, look, reviews help. You yeah. Know, yeah. They're, they're really important. So review your books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's important. Uh, it's really important for the authors. And you you don't feel how important they are until you're an author. So for sure. Just you know, review review your books. Uh, but anyway, just uh Getting, getting back to, to why indie, right? Uh, so I, I, I thought, you know, that there was this, this stigma and I thought I needed to go trad, but actually, uh, again, uh, the guys at the, at the editorial department, they have the service, which is uh, uh, publishing help. And they, they're kind of uh, specialists on the market of uh, both trad and self-published. And I had actually sent the prologue to two other editors to, to kind of get fresh views because I, I thought, you know, the prologue is important. People yeah. are, are going to have to, to be drawn in. So I want more people reading this. Um, and they liked it. But one of the editors came back to me and said, you should sell book. And I was like, I, I wasn't even considering that. What do you mean? I'm not going to sell pub. If it's good, I'm going to trad pub. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to sell it to, to someone and it's going to be trad and everything's going to be great. And they're going to do my marketing for me <laughs> and, and they're going to do everything. And, and then <laughs> I talked to this other editor who was a, an expert on the market. And he was like, mm, it's, that's not how it works. You, you should, you should research this a bit because uh, you know, 
trad they 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 do you know market authors but there are a ton of trad authors who just get you know just it, it's not guaranteed no, Let, let's no. just put it that way you still have to do it, your it, own like yeah you still have to do your yeah. own research i've had a couple of trad you know published authors recently and they say that like everybody thinks it's they do everything for you they don't like you still have to you know that's why they're on my podcast that's why i'm you know like you you really do have to be no matter which one right you have to be ready to go the costs are cut a little bit you know but yeah you you're right you really do have to do the work <laughs> like they're not gonna do it for yeah, you unless yeah, you're brain and yeah. then it doesn't matter oh yeah 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 uh <laughs> but you know uh I, so I found out that I didn't know anything about either path. You know, I didn't know anything about trad or indie. So I said, okay, let me take a step back and look at this with fresh eyes and see what I want to, to really do here because it looks like I have a good story. So what's, what's the best way of putting it out in the world? Uh, and then uh, what sold it to me on indie publishing was the speed. Uh, it, it wasn't even the, the creative control. And you no, know, people talk about, a lot about the covers. I had to spend, uh, when I was studying about the covers, I was like, man, I understand why people try to publish now. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was like, they have a whole art team and, and you know, uh, a bunch of stuff that I did, I knew nothing about. You said you studied graphic design. I, yeah. I had to, to study that a little bit, not, not in depth, but, you know, I had to study photographic composition, graphic design. Uh, I studied how, how people do, do shots in, in Hollywood yeah. and, and, you know, negative space and, and all of that just to come up with the concept of what I wanted on my cover and how to find an artist, an artist who could do it. Right. Yeah. So, so that, that was, that was just a whole other process. Um, that's, that's kind of like the, the drawback to indie publishing is you have to do everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything and you have to do everything. Well, it is super, super easy to just slip up on something. And if it's like the cover, it's it's a big one you know so uh you have to dedicate time to stuff that isn't writing and you have to learn that stuff and you have to know what you're doing with this stuff yeah. otherwise you know you're shooting yourself in the foot yeah. right uh but the big one to me was speed in the sense of i thought i could write fast yeah yeah, yeah. no totally i thought i could publish more than one book a year and i knew that wasn't going to happen in track publishing yeah, yeah. so and I would probably be uh, not not be you know a, a high tier author. No one's a high tier author to start with normally, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. A few might be, but you know, I, I knew I wasn't going to get the big books from from the publisher to begin with. So I said, man, you know, maybe I should save up a bit and and invest the the money that I know that I can invest in, in everything that you know, I think should be invested in. And uh, I always say that it, it's just kind of two different paths to, to the same destination. Um, I don't discard being trad one day. It, it isn't my, I'm not, you know, starting indie to become trad. That's that's not not the objective. I really like this, this indie path that I took and, and I'm gonna keep on it. Um, but it's almost like the outline, you know, I'm not close to anything. So if one yeah, day a publisher kind of wants to talk to me, I'm always going to be open to, to everything. Uh, I'm a big Seahawks fan. And, you know, after I saw Russell Wilson being traded, I was like, okay, so yeah, anything can happen. Uh, and it's, it's <laughs> almost like that. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. So true. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just how, how, how things are, you know, and, and yeah, Andy gives you more control and he gives you more everything, but you need to work for it. It's not like uh, if you if you have that image of the cover you've always wanted since you were a kid, I'm sorry, but it's probably not good. <laughs> it's uh, very true. I, I am really sorry to say this, but it might be. OK, I'm not saying it isn't, but uh, probably you should study it a bit. You should, you know, understand graphic design, understand yeah. how how composition works, the, the market trends, what what you should do. And not saying that, you know, oh, my cover is perfect. No, not at all. You know, I think I got really lucky with my artist as well, who, who understood how to how to do the cover. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I don't think I'm any kind of a benchmark here. I've only got a book, and I've, I've been published for a month. So, <laughs> but I mean, from what I've I've studied. Uh, 
I really, 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 you know, urge indie authors to, to learn cover composition before they come up with, with an idea of what they want for their cover. Yeah. Because the cover is your number one marketing tool. You yeah. know, people cover by books without your brand. Yeah. Yeah. Like a movie yeah. poster. Yep. You're, you're, yeah, literally, exactly. you're literally selling them on the idea of, of what is in the book. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's so important. Um, Jeremy, I, I mean, yeah. You, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. To, no, no, no. Go, to, ahead, go, to, ahead, to go ahead. But you talked about the cover at the beginning, right? You said yeah, yeah. there was this kind of contrast of yin yeah. and yang. And the basic concept of my cover was that I wanted to, <clears throat> sorry, I wanted to give the contrast of life and death because it's, oh, it's one of the awesome. big ones in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life is, the tree is alive on top. Uh, uh, just for context, this is a, an eternal tree in the book. That oh, doesn't that's shed, cool. It doesn't shed its leaves ever. So when you're reading the book, you're going to go back to the cover and see that some leaves are kind of falling and they're gray and the ground and the ground is gray and ash. And it's like, oh, wait, what's going on here? Right. So it but it immediately gives you that the contrast of life and death oh, cool. and, and how people are dealing with it in the book. So, yeah, the concept wise, it's one thing, but you need to transform that into a design. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean. And of course, you have a sword there because it's fancy. So you need a yeah, sword. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's just that that's just one of the elements, right? In, in yeah, yeah. The, there's all of the other stuff, and and of course, uh, the the elephant in the room is you pay for everything. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. You, you have to 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 save up. It, it's it's just the way it is. Oh, can you do stuff? Uh, not not. Uh, with, with very very little money you can you can i'm not saying it isn't going to be good uh but you know if you don't invest money you invest time yeah and you, if you invest time then you're probably not writing or yeah. outlining or doing all the other stuff that you need to be doing so yeah. that's that's kind of the, the balance that that you need to, to find there you know it's uh how much do i want to invest in time or money and and when i say money it's just you know i, I went after after professionals to learn this stuff. And I feel like I, I've learned a bit about marketing, about you know a, a bunch of other stuff, but uh, it's what I call the price of experience, the literal yeah. price of experience because yeah, you're, yeah. you're paying. <laughs> but once you, you've learned, then maybe for, for the next few books, there's stuff that I won't, that you know already know that I won't need to, to invest in that much. And I, I might be able to do some stuff myself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of had to learn Photoshop. I, I am not, I am not telling people to do their own covers, <laughs> but I'm releasing a, a free novella, you know, pretty soon. Oh, um, cool. and I actually felt like I, I could take a crack at that cover, and it, it, it came out pretty good, you know, because it's free novella. It's, it's yeah, yeah. meant for my, for my uh, newsletters subscribers. So, uh, yeah, I mean. I'd never do that for book two, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, there's just some stuff you pick up on the way and you can use to, to maybe not spend as much. On a few yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it blew my mind how much, how little Jed Hearn spent um, on um, the, the Thunder Heist. I just couldn't believe it. He's got an amazing cover. He's like, yeah, it was like $200 months away on Deviant Art. And I'm like, he goes, it took me a long time to, you know, to find the person, but like I, my, I hate to I hate to do this to my two artists, but they're just amazing. Um, the one guy, uh, Jeremy Adams, um, you guys got to check him out. He's absolutely incredible. I know he's going to be like Felix Ortiz one of these days. He's got a great book cover, Cloudbirds. Uh, um, I think it's um, These Little Hands. Um, he's got some amazing ones. So I've been wanting him to do my indie covers for a long time. Um, you know, you know, the, 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 the price is decent. I feel for, you know, what he does, he's got these flowing, flowing landscapes, these great, fantastical images. His color schemes are amazing. I've rarely seen somebody like him. And the fact that he's not booked up solid and one of these bigger names right now is a travesty. So I'm definitely going to be using him for my indie stuff. And, you know, it's funny that you say that. Cause you know, I just feel like I do, I personally like, um, I was talking to, um, Jeffrey Haskell and a couple people about my Romans versus zombies book. And a couple of them were like, Oh, you should try to, you know, go here for this and here for that. So I've been actually thinking about that series. I don't care as much about the covers and things, um, you know, and some of the decisions, I just want the books to go out there. 
Um, I call it the Sanderson method. I do think if you can, you know, do like a hybrid publishing, I do think that is, you know, I don't want anybody touching yeah, my own fantasy world because it's taken me since I was 14. Um, you know, so yeah. 20 years, literally 20 years, you know, like I, nope, that's my baby. Like, I don't want anybody to have the rights to it. I want to, you know, every decision for art, I'm like George Lucas, you know, um, I want everything to be decided. So, you know, that's why I was like, well, maybe I can, you know, traditionally publish these books or my urban fantasies, but then this stuff, and that maybe even pay for some things that, you know, will look better for my own stuff. So I definitely think you're right there. You definitely have to decide, you know, where you're going. Scott Drayford with Rise of the Nages, like he, you know, had, he was ready to go. I think, and he said when we had our interview, like 2019, you know, uh, almost like 18, but then, you know, like yeah. stuff happened, it's slow. And then all of a sudden pandemic happened. And now, you know, his book just released recently, you know, in 2022. So me, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I want a rapid release. And, you know, I want yeah. to be yeah. ways. So I definitely think I agree with you. I think you have to decide what you want to do. And the other thing I want to talk to real quick is like, you mentioned, like, if you're going to self-publish, you have to be you know, because there are teams that do that advertising covers, whatever, you know, um, cop, you know, figure out copy editing. A lot of people only copy edit their book. You have to also copy edit your blurbs and your advertisements and everything on Amazon. So you need to learn those things. And you are your yeah. own team when you're self-publishing. So I think yeah. you are right, you know, and there are a couple of things I want to get good at. Like I want to copy edit my own thing so I can send it to a friend of mine, you know, make it a little quicker and cheaper. But it's like some of those things, you know, just make you more efficient. So I definitely think you're right. You really you self-publish, I feel like you need to figure out what type of team you would have. And then you do have to at least be a bard, if you will, a jack of all trades. Um, yeah. Otherwise, if not, then do take the time, I think, to, you know, get traditionally published. I personally just don't want to, I don't really care. I just want people to read my books. So I'm like, yeah, exactly. I gotta feel like exactly. furrying takes forever. So I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm like, I'd rather, I don't care about being rejected. Like I was rejected from thousands of jobs before I got my current one as a teacher. Like that's just, just the market, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, you know, yeah. and it is what it is. So I think I got a lot of rejections until I found my wife, you know, so I'm also used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't really care. But um, yeah, I just think, you know, people, I like so many things you said there. I think people really have to think about it and, you know, put their best foot forward. So I'm glad you uh, went yeah. indie publishing. I, I like having indie publishing friends. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we talked a little bit about it, but what is your debut novel, A Touch of Light, about? Like if you had to give us okay. like a, a good description of it, like an advertisement. What would you say? Yeah. yeah. This is something that as an indie author, you have to get good at. And I haven't, yeah. I don't think I've got, uh, I've got good at it yet, but. Uh, There's a lot of practice, uh, like blurbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's just so much. And I just get so excited about all the elements. But uh, yeah. if I were to, to kind of uh, put it in a nutshell, it's a story about a world that's kind of torn uh, between a few different cultures, right? So one culture is a, a union, kind of like the, the European Union, which is the, the domain, it has, it has uh, five or six nations, and they all follow this religion, which is the religion of the seraph. Um, and they they consider death to be to be unworthy because they they have this this kind of thing that they call the promised dawn, which is what I was talking about earlier about the, the reverse apocalypse, which That's is cool. when the, the seraph will come back to the land and it'll be, everything will be perfect. It will be paradise, right? And the seraph left uh, initially because of all the wars and all the death. So the people have concluded that death is the enemy. And if you die, that means the seraph isn't keeping you alive for the mm -hmm. promised dawn. And, you know, so that people are actually alive to see it, uh, there are what the church calls the seraph's blessings. So um, the people that are considered to be faithful actually live longer lives. So they live over 100, 200 years. Um, and if you die, it's probably because the seraph thinks you're unworthy. But the church does has this little exception, which is they can keep the bodies of those that have been clearly worthy in their eyes um, to be resurrected when the, when the seraph comes back. So, so that's one side of it. And then there's the other side, which is to the south, which are, are the clans, right? The, they're, they're a little more, more primal. Um, and they believe that the earth has only so much life to give. They believe that life comes from the earth. And if you don't give life back to the earth, uh, Zala, the dead goddess, which is trapped in the earth, will, will come out of it and 
destroyed the world basically uh so they actually believe you have to kill people you can't live longer than you need to because uh your life has has to has to be productive it has to mean something and man i just got so much inspiration from a, a ton of different sources yeah yeah this. i can tell <laughs> uh, uh but i i kind of felt a little bit of this was like you know the corporate life where you have to be you know efficient all the time otherwise you're dead so yeah, yeah you know, i say i mean you know inspiration can come from anywhere but uh so sorry, you, you see, uh, I, I've gone off onto a tangent. So you have these these two these two cultures, and then you have three points of view that that are are leading us through these these two cultures, right? So Adrian is is the prince of one of the domain nations, and he's lost a few loved ones, and he just wants to to prove that they're worthy so that they can be brought back. Ooh, good theme, uh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, in in the promised dawn, and, and that's that's kind of his his kind of reasoning throughout this first book then there's lynn she's actually uh, a rogue uh sentinel uh who are That's these cool. griffin yeah she, she, she's griffin uh, the sentinels are griffin riders and okay. they're kind of like the church's templars right they're 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 elite warriors for the church but they're like <laughs> super powerful and they yeah. and they they have this magic system which is linked to to their griffin so they can pull strength and speed for their griffin if they give the griffin a certain emotion right i'm gonna so, be hitting you up so, i'm be hitting you up when i uh finish my start doing my finish my outline for my griffin rider series and be uh awesome see what you think that's awesome <laughs> awesome that's awesome cool. So yeah, so I mean, you know, if your emotion is like anger, as Lynn's is, you know, she she gets really angry. She feeds her Griffin the anger. She she gets his his strength back, and and then she uses it to to fight. So uh, she's also on, on kind of her quest. She has a, a few things that happened in her past that she feels really guilty about, and she kind of feels like death is is always hounding her. And there's this also really cool thing that the sentinels are the only ones that they're kind of like the, the double sevens of this world they're the only ones who have license to kill because oh, cool. uh, they are part of the church so they can basically judge if you're worthy or not so it, it so people are kind of scared of sentinels right because oh, awesome. they have the, the, the part to, to kill you so uh and the means to do it so yeah so so lynn uh also also kind of has has her 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 arc through this book of of trying to to find her place basically uh in in this in this religion and, and in this faith um and then there's nasha who's who's one of of, of the people from from the clans she's uh she, she's kind of cursed she she's cursed with the ability to feel the emotions of people around her oh that's cool but she but she can't control it so if someone's really angry beside her, she she can lose control, and this has happened in the past. But she can really lose control, like go on a killing spree. So, uh, yeah, I said in a nutshell, but it's it's not a nutshell anymore. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so yeah, so then there's there's like these these three characters, and, and and this curse that Nasha has, she considers it a curse because the clans, the, the way that their religion is basically based on the on tales, you know, they, they, the way that, that they, they convey information is through story and then people kind of like sitting around the fire and telling those stories. And in the past, there were these, these kind of people with, with similar abilities as Nasha and they, they were considered to be uh, the earth breakers, right? They, they were kind of like the enemies of, of the clan. So Nasha is, is hiding this curse from, from everyone uh, and she needs to find a way to control it and hide it at the same time. So, so yeah, and then, you know, things start happening, the, the, the land is kind of starting to change and the clans, they, they kind of see the land starting to, to, to die in places, they, they think, and then in the domain, there's this madness that's rising, right, and uh, people are going kind of, kind of crazy and, and they become feral and, and, and uh, it's, it's contagious and they start attacking each other and it's like death inside the domain, which is, which is horrible for them because they worship life, so uh they're kind of like these these two storylines happening at the same time and these characters are just trying to deal with it while dealing with their own you know personal issues that, that i outline here so uh it, it's kind of a a, a setup to, to bring all of this together and and 
and comes to, to a, a pretty, I mean, I, I think the, 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 the end of the story is pretty cool. I've seen people, people tell me that as well, but uh, the end of this book, right? And it, it's just setting up the, the, other, the other books in the series, but it is, you know, it stands on itself as some pretty cool, cool stuff happening. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's just basically it of, of what's going on here. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the story, you know. We'll yeah, yeah, that yeah. To it. sounds awesome. <laughs> there's a lot, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I admit there's a lot. I know, I know there are a ton of elements. It's like I, I got all of my childhood, all the games and everything, <laughs> and I just put it together. That's usually, story. that's usually where the really good story comes from though. So that's yeah, something awesome. Yeah. Could definitely see where my friends are going nuts over it, so I'm I'm really yeah. looking forward to to read it myself. Cool. I'll be um I have a few now where like I have to get a few things done, but I'm um working with Benjamin from Literature uh, and Lo-Fi, and yeah. uh, I'm gonna start reviewing books here this summer. So I'm he's kind of showing awesome. me the ropes with my first one, and then after this, like I I got some Will Whites that I'm backed up on that I read the first three. Probably read the fourth one today mostly. Um, and I got a few things to get going, uh, but yeah, this summer I'll be reviewing books. So I'm hoping to get to yours, uh, shortly. So that's, uh, cool, really cool, exciting. Cool. You just moved up cool. on my list. If you got Griffin riders in there and, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Templar. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so when it came to, so I think this is a good question, um, now. So when it came to like your character development, like how did you come up with, they sound like amazing characters, by the way. So how did you come up with, what kind of character development did you use to come up with these great characters? Uh, so yeah, uh, the the basic uh, template I used was uh, something that I got from from the book, which I told you about the the temp, the, the compass of character by David Corbett. I, I looked up his name. Uh, um, it, this guy was actually a PI for 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 the longest time, so oh, I cool. think he he kind of knows people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I just basically tried to do to, to make them as real as as possible. And there's a lot of stuff he talks about in his book, which is not you know a lot of people talk about the fatal flaw, but if you think about people, we're not like black and white. You know, it's a, you don't come up to someone saying, "What's your fatal flaw?" You know, we have a ton of flaws, and we have a ton of stuff that that we do well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's more based on on their yearning. Which is like, what do they really kind of need to exist? What do I they like need that. to survive? Uh, and the character kind of kind of sprouts from that. They, they sprout from a yearning. They they don't sprout from from a template or or, or, or you know an archetype or something. For me, it, it's more like okay, let's start with these uh, kind of ethereal yearnings, and then we'll we'll build characters on on these these yearnings but the cool thing is the character doesn't necessarily know that is their yearning right uh so they also have their desire which is different from the yearning because the desire is what they think they want right and and giving them the desire it doesn't necessarily mean they'll be happy because it might not be what they yearn for yeah so you know half of the journey is them kind of like understanding what they yearn for and 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 you know, just identifying that okay, so this is is what I need. This is what will make me happy, right? Uh, so so yeah, I mean that that's where it all started, and then the the template that I kind of kind of created kind of goes from there, which is uh, you know what's their fundamental misunderstanding of life or the world that makes them the way they are, and that makes them you know. Uh, that gives them kind of the, the flaws that they have, or or at least the flaw that's really bothering them in the story, right? And and this is where you get the backstory, right? This is where you know what traumatic event happened in that person's backstory that gives them a fundamental misunderstanding of who they are and and what their place is in the world, right? Uh, and. Once you get that, you know, it's like, okay, but there's also the other side. So what's the good bit? You know, what, what do they do well? What, what, what do they actually recognize in themselves as, as them being good at? And what happened in the past for them to, to recognize this, you know, to, to see themselves as, as, as being good at that thing. And 
it's just when you start putting all these things together, you you kind of create 3D characters, you know, because they have all of this foundation and they have everything that's happened. And I mean, I don't even think half of this is going to be in, 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 in the book that you write when you're creating this character, but you need it to understand them and to understand and to have consistency in the way they act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That drives me nuts when you don't. Like Uhtred of Bedenberg, right? I love the Netflix show yeah. because even though there are certain flaws that he's getting better at and changes, you know that if you're somebody he cares about or you're an innocent person or especially a kid, um, you know, Michael Weston in Bird Notice is like this too. Like things change for these two characters. The one thing that I love about them is if you attack a kid, you're done for. Like yeah. I understand that as a teacher, like, I got to protect my kids and my life. Like that is something that I identify with them with. And I, if they ever change that, about those two characters i would be like that's not this character you yeah, know exactly. I, I i totally agree with you yeah so 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 that's that's kind of my process of, of creating them and uh it sounds very outliney because i did create them in the outline it's part of my outline uh but yeah it's it's kind of, of like taking some time to identify what kind of of character you want to create and then of course they're they're the the details that that come later on yeah, yeah uh but i mean that's that's just like the the base of it i'd yeah. say i think that's a yeah I think that's a great answer right there definitely have to check out this <laughs> this book <laughs> yeah For yeah sure. yeah it's really it's really good i mean i had read a few books in character when i read this one everything just clicked and it's like oh okay okay right. so yeah. right right that's how i needed to do it so so yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool well, I'm going to skip the sixth one because we talked about, you know, some of your writing tool strategies, books. I think what I'll yeah, do with yeah. this one is I'll go through. I'm actually going to look them up all myself. Um, I'll put your description um, links and then I'll actually put some separate ones because uh, these sound like amazing tools to me that like, I know I'm cool, going to cool. check out. Um, what, what were the, was there anything um, beside the books that, you know, and tools that you found from these books that, you know, you just maybe naturally use? Like I know... Um, um oh my gosh um uh tilda hilt colt um she sorry tilda colt holt she um has this great outlining tool that she uses with post-it notes that i actually am going to try um this mm -hmm. summer and i had never seen that before is there anything like that that like any other tools or strategy you use that maybe you know somebody just gave to you or you know are there any that yeah. you're definitely going to keep using for book two like were there any changes there do you think Anything. I gave it some uh, thought, but in the end, I just use Microsoft Word and I just have a ton of, of, of documents yeah, yeah, spread yeah. out and I try to organize myself with, with the folders because, uh, I don't know, I, I think maybe it was just a little, too, you know, you, you need to find your, your, your limit so that you're yeah. not overwhelmed. Oh, totally. And I think this, this was like uh, one of the things that was like, okay, I, I'm, if, if I jump into like a separate tool of, I think it's going to be a little too much, so I'm just going to stick to Word. But I can say that besides books, I, I really I go down YouTube rabbit holes all the time, and one of the the main kind of like channels that I use to to learn a ton of, of writing stuff as well is Hello Future Me. Uh, and and man, uh, Tim the the host, he he just he does it kind of like what I what I do he, he but on a much larger mm -hmm. scale he, he, he just like he reads like 10 books on a subject and then he makes a video on it oh, and cool. you know the, the one on fight on fight scenes he has two videos on fight scenes that are, they're just awesome they're amazing he analyzes how stuff is 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 done and he breaks it down and I really really like the the videos on that channel so they they help me a lot both the, the fight scenes video and the naming video you know how to come up with names oh that's cool that that was really good as well oh that's cool yeah well I'm definitely have to check that out that I'm gonna add yeah that. yeah that, that, <laughs> that's exactly what I was looking for I you know like I I, I think it's hard to find things like that, you know, no offense to anybody the, you know, the characterization books, conflict, like whatever craft books, I feel like are really easy to find, but those types of resources are very rare when I find yeah. them, I'm like, I'm like save, you know, I tried and share them like crazy, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So who are yeah. some authors that have inspired you to write? Uh, so, I mean, 
first, the first one was George R. R. Martin, which is pretty cliche, but <laughs> uh, cliche I, I for a reason. It's yeah, yeah, cliches yeah. for a reason. So yeah, I actually joked that I took like ten years to actually pull the trigger on writing because I had the idea bouncing around in my mind, and then I read a song of Ice and I was like, nope, he did it. He's already done it well. I won't get to this level. So bye. I'm not doing this. Uh, so he, he maybe inversely inspired me to write. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I let it, you know, kind of like simmer for a bit. And then, I know <laughs> and that. The, yeah, the, the idea came back eventually of, of writing. But uh, no, George R. Martin was, was, I think, you know, the, the first one. But then, you know, I, I just started reading a lot of, of other fantasy. And uh, I really, I really clicked with with Mark Lawrence and Joe Abercrombie oh, yeah, yeah. the, the grim dark side and yeah. and you know I, I just really love Mark Lawrence's prose it's it's I mean, not only his prose but man his prose is spectacular yeah yeah um and you know of course Abercrombie's characters are, are amazing as well and then you know just just a ton of, of different things I don't see a lot of people saying uh talking about Patrick Rothfuss's world building but it's so subtle and there are so many little details that keep you coming back and keep you creating theories. And I wanted that, I, I wanted that for myself. <laughs> oh, cool. So I, I really did that in my story. Uh, if you read my book the first time, you'll probably won't pick up on a ton of stuff. If you read it again and again, it's like all oh, the answers were there. Well, <laughs> how did I get this? Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so, so that was also a big one. And you know, just N.K. Jensen, uh, when I read the, the fifth season, Man, that book is just so visceral. The, the magic system is just so so cool. The way she writes is is amazing, and you know, just that that first book in particular was a really big inspiration to, to a, a ton of stuff that, that I cool. I did as well. So, I mean, there are a lot of names that that inspire you in in, in different ways, right? But I I think those are probably the the main ones that I went for. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was, I'm really looking forward to the fifth season. I literally found it. I was at one of the bookstores and I found it for paperback and it was like on sale. And I was like, yes, please. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. A lot of people like yourself, have, you know, keep coming up time and time again. So that one's definitely high up on my summer reading list. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so for the, I, you know, I would, for, so obviously, <clears throat> lose my voice now. So obviously you have a touch of light out right now. Are there any other news updates, promos or current projects or anything like that that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, uh, I actually finished writing uh, a prequel novella. It's called A Prelude okay. to Ashes. Uh, it's in my editor's hands right now. So oh, cool. I'm, <laughs> I, I haven't set a release date yet because I want to see the state of what I wrote so yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for for him to, to get back to me and, and and tell me how bad it is so that I know how much work it's gonna need <laughs> to, I, I, I'm kidding my, my editor is awesome he, he's not just like some guy who keeps saying my stuff is bad he's actually the, the opposite he, he's he's really supportive but you know we have to be to be uh honest about what I'm writing so yeah. uh so yeah uh uh, I'm just I'm just waiting for him to to get back to me with with the comments on on that draft and and see how much work I'm gonna I'm gonna need on it. I my optimistic uh, kind of kind of date for this is May. Okay. So so I'm hoping I can like use this month for editing, maybe a little bit of the next one, and have it out in May. It's it's gonna be a free novella for the, the digital version for for my for my newsletter subscribers. Okay. So. You know, if anyone's curious about my work, that'll be a, a, a cool little introduction to, to the world and, and everything else in it. Um, and then I'm writing book two right now, uh, Shade of Madness. Um, oh, that's and, cool. uh, that's awesome yeah. title. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's I actually have the titles for all for all four books. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Already kind of decided on. So. Uh, yeah, the, the, the further ones may change, but I'm pretty sad on the shade of madness because it's a touch of light and then a shade of madness. So. Yeah, it's just that's awesome. <laughs> that's a great title. I wouldn't change that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. uh, yeah, thanks. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm writing it. I'm hoping to have it out this year still. Oh, cool. Um, 
yeah, because I want to use the self-publishing speed for that. So, yeah, yeah. again, everything depends on on the state of, of the draft and and how good it is after editing. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Those those are the projects that I'm working on. Uh, I, I'm telling myself I want the entire series done by next year. You know, so two books this year, two books next year, and and we're done. Yeah, maybe yeah, a few yeah. other novellas. So yeah, so it's yeah. a great pace, I think, for for self-publishing and and just coming. Out. I think a lot of people they you know, they put out that first book and then they wait like a year and a half. And I'm like, I, I try and tell them, I'm like, don't, don't do that. <laughs> like if you're going to, yeah. you got to go, you know, you got to, any success, yeah, yeah, yeah. success, you know, like that's where I think, um, you know, like I'm personally just, I've, you know, done the research over the last six years and I think the market is still there for, you know, for rapid releasing, but you know, if you, you know, I think that's a great pace. Like that's the kind of pace, like I'm trying to set for myself after rapid releasing, for instance. And I just, I think that's a great, self-publishing pace so I, I really hope that that you know that works really well for you um and once you're done with the yes. novella or whatever like any news or updates you got just just tag me everybody's always afraid to cool. tag me <laughs> either tag my personal author one or my podcast that way it's easier for me to share things like sometimes with the algorithm now i'm missing things like you try and tell all my friends i'm like um you're who've been on i'm like please please tag me that way i know that there's news and i can share it yeah like, i'll share it everywhere i'll keep sharing yeah it, yeah sharing it and sharing it so yeah that's that's super awesome. Well, you know, if you awesome, want to come awesome. back, you know, next uh, next month, you know, whenever you're ready for, you know, novella or whatever, or June, you know, let me know. We'll have you back for that. I'll try and help out with that. And obviously, you know, keep us in mind for, you know, for book two, especially um, you know, cool, cool. To do that stop for people um, for news and updates and stuff like that. That way, you know, fans come in and can see you guys like right off the bat and, and know what's going on. But I'm really excited awesome. to download the book later on today. Uh, you always wait till, uh, I have people on. Um, I always like to do that because it just makes the process that much cooler for me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Kind of like a treasure, you know. I actually know what I have now, um, so it makes yeah, it yeah, yeah. More fun. You know what to expect, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just, you know, I'm really excited. So yeah, as soon as I, uh, you know, can get to, you know, your book and, um, you know, can review it, I will uh, send you the video ahead of time. Any reviews I do, I send them ahead of time. They're spoiler free um i don't like do numbers or anything like that i always review everything yeah. on goodreads i don't really make it really public or whatever because people are like why'd you give that a four out of five instead of a, a five out of five or whatever so yeah, I try not yeah. to do that. but um but yeah like so i'll be sending that to you um to check and if you know there's something that needs to be changed uh, you know we can edit it out or or something like that just trying to help people out as best we can awesome. if there's anything awesome. else i can do to help you out you know with book one novella or you know book two or you want to just come by and get an idea or meander with me we'll you know coast through cool, the waters cool. of writing together and you know we'll figure it out my friend but i wish yeah. you all the best with book one you know as anytime i see it i've been sharing it so i will continue awesome man i really look forward awesome. to it. awesome thank you and i just realized you have a brazilian fat flag back there i do i do yeah. <laughs> um, i i unfortunately with my job um you know, like I, I got injured. I was really busy in two master's programs. I got done and then like, I, like life happened. So I haven't been back to jujitsu in a while. And I have a, um, um, minor, uh, what do you call it? Um, autoimmune disorder for the Graves disease. So it's been kind of hard mm -hmm. to go back and I'm a teacher and like, if it's just me, you know, that I risk, it's like, it's one thing, but it's just hard for me right now to justify going back to jujitsu oh, yeah, yeah. when you're like right there even with a mask. Yeah. So I'm hoping that our numbers are down a lot here in New York, um, where I'm at in central. Um, so I'm hoping by, you know, like after the fall, I'm hoping that, you know, numbers will be more decent, but yeah, I love, I got my, all my flags up of all the countries <laughs> that I know a martial art from. Cool, cool, I got, cool. I got that one. I got South Korea for Taekwondo. I got Thailand for Muay Thai. I got awesome uh, pan for karate so it's kind of my little <laughs> my little world geography session i always used to keep up in my classroom when kids would ask me day one i'd be like yeah i know a martial art from every country and then it usually set the tone where nobody is like you know they're like oh. they're like well we feel really safe in this classroom i go because you are i'm like yeah you are, you are. <laughs> never more safe than when you're here but yeah it's really funny uh awesome. i really want you know again really want to thank you for coming on spending that time with us again want to remind everybody that um Chago's um, social links will be in all the descriptions for anywhere that you find this interview. Uh, and I'm also going to be, um, you know, putting in the books that you recommended too, uh, as well as the cool. YouTube channel. So I actually look really forward to uh, doing, you know, checking those out as well. So and I always, like I say, I always do this to help myself out too in my writing. So you yeah, have yeah, a lot yeah. to think about today. I'll probably be sending you some questions and stuff like that. on uh, awesome. TikTok or something like that. So yeah, 
Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I hope you and your family, cool, cool. you know, have a, you know, rest of your safe travels and hopefully I will talk Thanks, to you man. on social media, my friend. Thank you. Same, same. Yeah. Super fun chat. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime. I hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I'll talk to you later. See you. Bye. Bye.